Joining me at the Metals and Minerals Conference in San Francisco now is Mark Bristow, CEO for Rangold. Mark, thanks for being with us. Nice to be here. Thank you very much. So obviously my first question to you is your thoughts on the current state of the mining sector. Obviously tough times. How are you coping? Yeah, it is a tough time, relatively speaking, but, you know, something we've always said is that, you know, gold goes up and it goes down, not necessarily in that uh, order, and uh, it's a long-term business, and Rand Gold has allocated its capital at $1,000 an ounce for a long time now, and we didn't follow the gold price up when it went up to 1900 We stuck with 1000 Does the lack of exploration in the sector scare you right now? No, it's a super exciting opportunity for us. You know, we've built Rand Gold Resources on the back of exploration. We still only have 92 million shares outstanding. We've only, we split them in 2002, two for one. We don't issue equity and we find our own gold mines. So, uh, you know, the juniors were our biggest competition in a bull market. They've fallen over. So we've been able to consolidate our footprint in the highly prospective regions of Africa. So you're making the lower gold price work to your advantage? Absolutely. And that's, uh, you know, not by acquiring, uh, you know, companies, but by uh, earning in, in joint venture type structures. And going back to 1999, we did the same in Tongan, the Tongan mine in Ivory Coast. We earned in on a junior who couldn't find enough expiration dollars to keep it going. And we own 89% of that company now. Now let's look at the Kabali mine. I know there's an election in the DRC in 2016. Are there election concerns looking forward? You know, there was a there was a historical uh, article out of a from an analyst in uh, London just recently highlighting that point. Uh, you know that th we've seen elections, uh, two elections now in uh, in the DRC. It's very significant because be before 2006, there were no elections and it was a war. So huge progress in the DRC. You've seen the, the, the M23 defeat. You know, Mr. Kabila ma managing uh, lots of dynamics. He, it's not a single party state. Uh, he has to, he survives on a coalition basis. So very interesting interrelated politics. I think he's done a good job so far. Um, there's a lot of competent people in the DRC and you know I think that that country will slowly evolve as we've seen West Africa evolve mm -hmm. right. and we've seen recently Kenya really grow not only evolve but grow and that whole sub-Saharan region is a very exciting right. place well, for West me. West Africa now considered probably one of the safest places to mine right now right? Well yeah. everything's relative right. isn't it you know right. people become uh, you know uh, um, uh, consumed by relativity but yeah, Africa is always going to be a difficult place to work. Uh, it's The good things are that the governments want to attract capital, and that's what we bring. And if you trade that capital for uh, profitability, everyone wins, and that's what we've been saying. And uh, the, the challenges are that it's infrastructurally challenged, and so, you know, capital costs are high compared to some of the more... Uh, uh, developed parts of the world, but returns can also be high, as Rand Gold has demonstrated. So as we head into 2014, what are some challenges that you, you feel you'll need to overcome? We are super well posi per positioned for 2014. Uh, you know, we're, we've spent our capital. Uh, we allocated it at 1,000, as I said in the beginning. Uh, we're going to grow from uh, 900,000 ounces to 1.2 million ounces. But more importantly, our costs are scheduled to come down to the mid-600s. So we are profitable uh, and, and, and it's an exciting time and you know, something that we live for. I think the, the other thing that separates us from the industry is we haven't cut expiration, we haven't cut our uh, intellectual capital and, uh, and we've got some really exciting expiration opportunities. So where, where are you doing the cost cutting then? We don't. We allocate capital at a thousand, so we work at a thousand, and and when we spend capital, we expect a return from it. So why cut it if you're allocating at a thousand and you want to make money from it? All right. Finally, I love asking mining CEOs their gold projections. Usually, very bullish. What are your thoughts for gold as we start the new year? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer it <coughs> in, a, in in probably a statement, and that is that when gold was at nineteen hundred, we were still allocating our capital at a thousand. So I'm not a gold bull. 
I believe in the gold industry. I think if you focus on viable assets uh, and you focus on profitability, you'll always make mo money in the gold uh, market and the gold price is going to go up and down. And you know, that's what it is, uh, not necessarily in that order. And so, you know, we've been around when gold was 300. Uh, we're around uh, at a thousand and, and I'm absolutely positive we'll be growing no matter what the gold price is in the future. So do you have a projection within now from the next six months? No, I think the price is going to be under a lot of pressure for the next six to 12 months, maybe even 18. I think it, it all depends on the discipline of the mining industry and whether we can bring ourselves to close down unprofitable gold production. And if you do that, the gold price is going to go up. Well, Mark, best of luck. Thanks for chatting with me today. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me on your show. And thanks for watching our coverage from the Metals and Minerals Conference here in San Francisco. You can email us at newsfeedback at or follow me on Twitter at Daniela Kambonin. Thanks for watching.